We in the West, in North America, are fundamentally materialist people. We think of the world in materialistic terms. We think of poverty as a lack of material things. We think the solution to poverty is to provide material things for people. But it's so interesting, if you ask poor people around the world what is poverty, they define it in very different ways. Uh, if you ask the poor, they will say things like, to be poor is to be full of shame, is to be embarrassed, is to be humiliated, is to feel less than human, is to feel like you're not really part of society. The poor describe their poverty, yeah, in material terms, but in far more psychological and social terms than most North Americans do. I've got two cars in the driveway, I've got a nice house. I'm not materially poor, but there's profound brokenness in my life. I'm not experiencing all that God intended for me. And so what I'm discovering as the director of the Chalmers Center and, 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 and in my work with the materially poor is that I actually can't fix them. And I used to think that I could. I can't fix them. Only Jesus Christ can fix them. And I can't fix me. Only Jesus Christ can fix me. And so poverty alleviation isn't so much about me uh, putting food in the hands of that beggar lady as much as it's taking her hand and saying to her, I'm a beggar too, but I found the bread of life and he can heal you and he can heal me too. Acts is not another program. It's not a, another silver bullet approach to trying to deal with poverty. One of the things that historically is done uh, when we do this sort of work in our society in particular is that we tend to view people as other, as those people that need our help. And the paternalism that um, is probably drives a lot of the helping that is done in our society is very counter to what scripture teaches. The thing that is really key in helping people's lives to transform is long-term relational commitments. We both get something when we get into these relationships. I'm going to grow and learn and be healed in the ways that I need to grow and learn and be healed, as is the other person that I'm attempting to engage and to serve in some way. So Acts helps the churches recognize we're all broken. We all need God's grace. We all need God's love. If we have material resources, that's fine. That's something that we can certainly do, but don't think that because we somehow have been successful by the way the society deems success, that we are you know, not still hurting, not still broken, not still in need. And Acts is a model that helps the church get to that point, to fulfill its destiny, to do the thing that only it can do, that no other institution can do in our society. You know, Fairhaven Church started in the inner city. We were birthed out of a church in the inner city and came to the suburbs. We've wanted to do something for our city. We wanted to make sure that our passion is not just for the world uh, that's across the oceans, but the world that's right in front of us. And as we have been now in the suburbs for so many years, We've been asking ourselves, how do we get back in helping the city? How do we help our community? And as I talked to city leaders, mayors, congressmen, I heard poverty. That's the issue that they told me about. We need to do something about that. How do we get a bunch of people together and how do we mobilize ourselves so that together we can do so much more when we get the whole church behind it? Let's join the movement of eradicating poverty.